Hey, it's Dr. Schmidt at the Nutritional Healing Center of Ann Arbor. And uh, today is Monday. So yesterday, Sunday, I was at VegFest 2017 in Detroit. So it's a vegan food festival. And uh, I went on behalf of the Good Fat Bar, which is a company that I started a year and a half ago. We sell a, a high-fat bar that's all plant-based. So it was a very interesting experience. I was there all day as a vendor at the uh, Good Fat Bar table. And um, talk to a lot of vegans. And, you know, so it's, it's time for me to say something about this. I get a lot of questions. And uh, so I'm going to do this video on veganism versus ketosis. Now, ketosis involves, um, it could involve eating a lot of fat. You want to raise up the fat relative to protein and carbs. Protein and carbs burn like sugar. When the fat is higher, then your body starts burning fat. So um, now you can get into ketosis and still be a vegan. And I had three people do that so far. You can get into ketosis and not eat any fat at all because you're not eating any food. You'll be in ketosis in three or four days. So that, and you can get in ketosis with endurance exercise. So there's many ways to get into ketosis. Now I've had recently some people say low carb eating is how you get into ketosis. That is not true. It's got to be lower carb and moderate protein and higher fat. Okay, I taught low carb for 19 years and uh, didn't like the results compared to now. In the last year, I'm having way better results. Okay, so low carb is not enough. Okay, so Dr. Greger was one of the speakers at VegFest yesterday. And uh, I've seen some, some of his videos and uh, he advocates a high vegan, uh, I'm sorry, um, high carbohydrate, totally vegan diet no animal fat, no animal protein. And he's, every statement that he says is backed by research. And um, I intended to sit in his audience for 10 minutes only so I can get back to the good fat bar table. But I was actually quite captivated by what he said and I was there for an hour. And I left my business partner all by himself for the hour. I apologize, Terry, but... Um, it was well worth it for me to sit there and listen to Dr. Greger. It was very entertaining, very educational. It was a, it was a great um, slideshow show presentation. You can see the whole thing on YouTube. It's called How Not to Die. And it's an hour long. And depending on which version you see, he may take questions at the end. But um, with everything that I learned from him and everything I've known for the last 20 years, um, I'm going to make some statements about veganism. And the truth is it works to prevent uh, cancer and heart disease. And Dr. Greger has research that shows that people get cured of their chronic disease conditions, their weak immune system, their chronic pneumonia, chronic bronchitis, uh, COPD goes away, immune system problems go away. Um, the chronic disease is depression, um, the t he, what he does, he takes the top 15 causes of death and how a vegan diet can reverse it or prevent it. And only, um, there's only one that it can't prevent, which is accidents, which obviously it's unrelated to your diet, but, um, that, and that's debatable. <laughs> but uh, as he's going through this list over the hour that I'm watching him, I'm thinking to myself, well, I've actually reversed Alzheimer's and I've... Uh, reversed uh, heart conditions. I've reversed cancer. I've helped people's immune system. I've reversed all of those things with a animal-based diet, high-fat diet, um, with supplements that have animal parts in them. And so how is it that a total vegan diet and a total animal-based diet can reverse the same chronic conditions? They seem like they are total opposites. Well, <clears throat> here's the deal. It all comes down to lactic acidosis, which I've been talking about now for a year when I figured it out. Lactic acidosis is uh, the most common mechanism of chronic disease, well known prior to 1960, squashed by the AMA in 1961, and forgotten. And so I've recovered it because I was sick from mold poisoning a year and a half ago now and I fixed it um, 
and I had to figure out like how I fixed it. How, mold poisoning can cause lactic acidosis, by the way, which is my next video, so hang on for that. But I fixed the lactic acidosis, and then I fixed the mold in my heart. And so, but I had to go back to old books and old manuals and old articles to figure out what lactic acidosis is. And um, lactic acidosis most commonly is caused by excessive intake and metabolism of carbohydrates. So the easiest way to have excessive um, metabolism of carbohydrates is by eating lots of bread, pasta, rice, cereal, all of those are grains. So grains are the most common cause of lactic acidosis, especially if your body and your liver is deficient in B vitamins. Okay, so here it is. Here we have cells burning sugar, and then you get an increase in the waste products of that process. And then your liver needs to clean this garbage out, and if that's not working very well, then you get an excess on this side. Either way, the lactic acidosis, the waste products, there's four of them, um, they make the blood toxic and hypoxic, which makes the arteries dilate because the body's trying to get oxygen to the cells. The little tiny capillaries that feed the cells, they also dilate. And then you get um, cell starvation because the blood is toxic and hypoxic and stagnant. Now the cells are starving, now they're dying. The cells die, the tissues die, the organs die, your body dies. That's lactic acidosis. It's also known as cachexia. So you can look up cachexia on Google. It means bad habits. What's the bad habit? It's sugar. Sugar is a bad habit. Protein burns like sugar. So a high protein diet is like eating a high sugar diet. Okay, so there you go. So Dr. Gregor and Dr. McDougall and other vegan proponents um, talk about how it reverses uh, chronic disease because it's actually cleaning up the liver and it's cleaning up the blood. That's what a vegan diet does. Now you're still burning sugar, but at least you've cleaned up two out of three of the, uh, of the system of lactic acidosis. What I've been doing is stopping the body from burning sugar and using fat instead as fuel. The fat is fuel, that's ketosis. So then we clean up the liver with supplements and by eating liver and so you do these two things, and that cleans this up. Okay, so you could go vegan and do these two, or you could do what I've been doing, which is these two. But you know, truthfully, you can do these two and eat a lot of vegetables and juice, which I have a video on this called Juicing versus Ketosis. So really, you want to do all three. <clears throat> so if you do all three, then um, you're cycling your diet through the day and you, you're in ketosis for let's say 10 hours during the day um, from eating high fat and fasting then you can do juicing I have uh, the, the, the juicing video explains this in, more, in greater detail I'm not going to get into further detail with it so the point here is that um, the uh, vegan doctors I've watched their videos and what they say and I've read their blogs and what they say about ketosis they don't understand what ketosis is. They're not, they don't have the knowledge about ketosis. What they say is that ketosis is a result of starvation. It's a result of pathology. It's an abnormal state of the body. All three of those statements are incorrect. Ketosis is a natural state of the body. It just means fat burning. It doesn't, it's nothing to do with being pathological. What it does is actually, it burns up the abnormal proteins. It gets rid of, uh, pathological protein, skin tags, um, fibroids, cysts, cancer cells get smaller. It's catabolic for pathological proteins and um, conditions. Okay, so that's, that's the biggest critique I have of both of these doctors is that they don't, do, they don't understand ketosis, they don't do it. So, um, so now you can make your decision that if you want to prevent your diseases and potentially reverse any pathological situation, you could do it either way. You could be a vegan or you could get into ketosis. Um, if you choose to be a vegan and if you want to do it right, there's absolutely no animal products allowed. If you do it according to the research, no butter, no milk, no animal fats, no animal proteins, period. 
And then one of the ladies at the Veg Fest yesterday, she said, there's no such thing as good fat. As she's eating my good fat bar, which is uh, cacao butter, I said to her, well, if you believe that, don't eat that bar. And so she actually spit it out and threw it away. But see, that's taking it like, you know, to an extreme. Because all of our native ancestors all ate fat. And that was proven by Dr. Weston A. Price in the 1930s. He traveled around the world. He studied 134 indigenous tribes. And what he said is that every single tribe um, ate some form of raw animal product. And then they also cooked animal products. And they ate vegetables, roots, tubers, and greens, etc., etc. And he was actually very sorely disappointed that there were no vegan tribes. Because in the 1930s, there was a, b a big vegan push. Um, it started with Dr. Kellogg, the cereal guy. And he's, he was a Seventh-day Adventist, which are vegans. And so Dr. Price was um, sort of disappointed that our native ancestors never had uh, vegan diets. Now, they lived to be... Um, they lived long lives. And the native Eskimo, they lived to be over 100 years old. And I actually have a patient in uh, Yukon, Canada. We had a discussion about this. And uh, he, he sees them eating raw intestine, raw animal products. They eat nothing but animal products for 10 months out of the year. And they'll have some produce two months out of the year. But they'll, they, they're in ketosis. And they live to be in their hundreds. Okay. So let me move on to the next sheet here. Now there are a couple things in common between the vegan people and the ketosis people and that is this and this is grains are bad and even Dr. Greger said even whole grains um, show up in the research as not being that good they're not as good as what we would want them to be they taste good they make us feel good they put us in that uh, food coma but uh, grains are bad even the whole grains now in my last 17 years I've purchased five loaf, loaves of bread to take home. I've purchased zero rice, zero pasta to take home. I've never ordered pasta at a restaurant. Um, so I've been doing low carb for 17 years like this. Okay, because I know that grains are bad. So if you choose to be a vegan or you choose to go into ketosis, just avoid grains. That includes sugar. And then another thing in common is exercise is good. So. And there's different purposes for exercise, but if you're going into ketosis, the purpose is to decrease the sugar out of your blood. Okay. Now, another point to talk about is the native diets, which I already hit on. But um, Dr. Greger and other vegans are saying that they go with this thing called the Blue Zones. You can Google that. It's a website, the Blue Zones. And the, um, the story behind it is that all of the long-living ancestral tribes that are still in existence today or there's records of from the recent past they're all plant-based diets well that's totally debatable it's easy to find plants and eat them they're not running away you don't have to spear them but plants are they cycle through the seasons and if you have a native tribe that lives in a mountaintop or in a four season area there's plants are not available all year round they end up eating animals during the winter time and maybe ran out of, of any food in the late winter, early spring. They're in ketosis. These native tribes got into ketosis. You can still be a vegan and go into ketosis. So, um, so don't be fooled that all native tribes were totally plant-based vegans. That's just not true. Okay, now the studies um, are frequently vegetable versus meat. So this is, we're talking about nutrition studies um, that are frequently cited. But the truth is, you want to, um, I'm sorry, let's say, I wrote vegetables versus meat. So it's like meat eaters versus uh, vegetable eaters. But what about grains? What about the breads? What about the grams of protein plus carbohydrates? It matters, they both burn like sugar. So the studies are not as good as what they should be. Because we know more now, we have a higher standard of, of quality for, for studies because we have new, tech, new knowledge. 
So um, when you look at a lot of uh, old studies, even I mean, even five years ago or you know 15 years ago, it's like vegetables versus meat eaters. Well, there's there's carbs in here and there's protein in here, and then there's fat in here and there's no fat in here. There's a lot of variables in here. We got to break. We got to make it um, more specific. Okay, last one. Ta making it more specific. Talk numbers. Okay, so. Here are six ways to talk about numbers. Number one, fat grams versus protein plus carb grams. And then the, the ratio between those two. The ratio could be one to one. It could be two to one. It could be, it could be one to ten. Okay, so here's one, two, three, four, five. Five numbers right there. Here's calories. Calories do matter. That's number six. How about your blood sugar? and your blood ketones. It's the best way to measure the state of your health. So seven, eight, here's glucose ketone index. When you get these two numbers, then you gotta get the ratio between them. That's nine numbers. And then here's the eating hours versus fasting hours. You're breaking up your day, just like our, natives, our native ancestors used to do. They didn't eat all day long. The average American is eating 14 to 22 times a day. That's not good. You gotta fast, even on a daily basis. So like today I had uh, breakfast, I skipped lunch, right now it's almost 7 o'clock, I'm ready for dinner when I get home. That's a, that's, I ate twice today, so that's, that's part of fasting. So these are all numbers that um, you need to talk about um, if you're a patient with me and to get specific with your health. Now I've looked at a lot of blogs and listened to a lot of people debate paleo versus vegetarianism versus South Beach and Atkins and low carb and, and high fat. Listen, numbers. I don't, I don't want to hear those words. The Mediterranean diet. I don't want to hear that. You got to talk about numbers. All right, I think I put in that message in. And, um, and like I said earlier, once you decide how you're going to reverse your poor state of health, um, then do it, do it really, really well. So if you're going to be a vegan, then you're just eating plants. Um, every single day and there's no cheating on that and the research shows even a little cheat like one let's say one burger a week or something or one piece of chicken a week it raises your chance for diabetes heart disease and uh, cancer and why is that it's because of um, combining the fat of that of that burger with the sugar that you're consuming that's the problem is that you can eat lots of fat going to ketosis have no sugar in your diet and you're super healthy. It's the combination of fat plus sugar. That's the, that's the biggest problem. Okay, so if you're doing a vegan diet, it's just sugar, 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 no fat. When you go into ketosis, it's high fat, no sugar. But here's the thing about ketosis. You can go in and out. So you can cheat. Okay, you can have uh, a, a nice meal for your anniversary. And you can have wine. And you can have even a dessert. You can cheat on a ketogenic diet because you do want to you want to come out of ketosis. It's healthy to come out because you want to resensitize your body to insulin. When you're in ketosis, your blood sugar and your insulin is low, and your body kind of gets lazy about insulin. It's an important hormone, but you don't want it to be too high because then it's dangerous. So you go in ketosis and you go out. Well, when you're out of ketosis. Those are your cheat days, your high carb days, your steak days, your you know like a big fat steak. That's your uh, your weddings and your birthday and your vacations and so then when you're done with your celebrations and you're done with your horrible choices, you go back into ketosis and you can reverse it. All right, so it's up to you. You can be a vegan every single day, or you can go into ketosis and then have your cheat days. Um, so if you want my help. You can contact Nikki at my office. She's a person that schedules our phone consultations. And um, there's a lot more to go over this, and I'll be filling up the YouTube channel with more information. But um, this is kind of a profound uh, <clears throat> subject here because I saw Dr. Greger speak, and I completely understand everything he's saying. And he is 100% right on eating plants and veganism. He doesn't understand the ketosis. But uh, I do. So I know what he knows and I know what he doesn't know. And I just filled in the, the blank spots for you today.